medical professionals, what's the scariest paranormal story that took place during work? Did a rotation in a burn unit? There are tons of stories that go around, but I'll share my favorite. A pimp lit one of his prostitutes on fire, and she immediately bear hugged him causing them to both suffer pretty severe injuries, unfortunately hers included an inhalation burn. They both were being treated in the same ICU but on opposite ends. Weeks later she ends up coding and passes away, and after about 30 minutes as things start to quiet down, the guy starts screaming from his room get her out. Get the goddamn woman out of my room. There is probably some medical explanation for this, but still the weirdest thing I've seen as a nurse so far. We had a very robust, confused old lady on our floor. Her room was in front of the nurse's station so we could keep an eye on her, and had one of our nurse's aides as a sitter too. She was always fighting, kicking, trying to get out of bed. Very restless and agitated, as some patients I've had before can get before death. One day we were called into the room as her heart rate was going down and she lay still with her eyes open. It was 30, 20 and then flatlined. We checked for a pulse and did not find any. She was a DNR so we did not attempt resuscitation. We close her eyes, prepare to get the body bag and call the family, the sitter remains in there to start getting the body ready. Less than 10 minuets later she calls us back in. The old lady is at it again, hitting, kicking, trying to get out of the bed. She came back to life. I've worked in a small family-run nursing home for six years as a nurse aide. It was an orphanage before it became a nursing home, and unfortunately before being shut down the orphanage had a history of severe abuse and neglect. Unfortunately it's not gossip the owner herself had told us. When residents get close to death they always see a little girl. One of my patients a very alert gentleman he knew all our names and was very alert and oriented. I was passing dinner trays and saw that he had his back turned and was talking and laughing in the corner of the room. I knocked and asked him who he was talking to and he chucked and said this little girl came into my room, she was scared he died three days later. About six months later had another patient screaming about a little girl grabbing his feet and she needed to leave him alone. He died that night. She's come up over the years it's always the same thing, they see her and then they die. Other co-workers have had the same experience. It's very unsettling. I worked in a pediatric hospital and had always heard that the fourth floor right outside our oncology unit was haunted. I worked 312s normally but would pick up overtime and picked up a night shift. I was working in the NICU which happened to also be on the fourth floor but on the opposite side. The oncology unit had a staircase that was a short cut down to the cafeteria which was on the second floor. At about 3 a.m. I was ready to take a short break and wanted a cup of coffee from the cafeteria so I decided to take that staircase. I walked through the automatic double doors and saw a kid skipping down the hall. I called out to him as I was afraid a little kid had snuck out of a patient room. As soon as I called out to him he turned and in the blink of an eye totally vanished. A lot of other nurses and docs had seen the same little kid skipping in that same hallway. Of course I chalked it up to just exhaustion and didn't really think about it much after that. But you are damn sure I didn't use that hallway at night ever again. I was working at night and one of the patients died while I was in the room, we tried everything to revive this person but it didn't work so after doing the papers and everything I went to another place in the hospital and I swear to god that this patient who I saw dead, touched my right arm. I think that I have never cried that much in my life. I used to work in a nursing home as both a CNA and an LPN, and while nothing too crazy happened there were definitely things that happened out of the ordinary. I remember one time after someone had died I was cleaning up her body and the door to the room swung wide open even though it had been firmly latched nobody was there. It gave me the creeps. There were instances of furniture being moved, lights turning on and off by themselves, and toilets randomly flushing by themselves as well. I also remember I had one resident one night who asked me to make sure I closed the door to the closet that was at the end of her bed and she told me that when it was open that woman kept going in and out of it all night and it kept her awake. A ward I worked on once had a patient who was a psychic slash medium as a patient. We had a bit of a laugh with her as she was on the ward for a while, she'd had a stroke which affected her mobility, and she would do readings for the staff etc from time to time. I took it all as just a bit of fun until one evening when she pressed her nurse call buzzer and told us to go check on a patient in a side room as he was dead. We went to check and sure enough found that the gentleman had died. Later on we asked our psychic patient how she had known and she told us she had seen him coming out of his room obviously distressed. 
she realized he had died and had to explain to him what had happened and help him to pass over to the light. I am not a believer but that gave me the creeps. I'm a nurse. I've witnessed quite a lot with Alzheimer's people. They often develop their own scenarios in their own head, often accompanied by vivid hallucinations. Once during night shift, I heard a woman scream in fear. Checking on her, she managed to climb into her wheelchair in pure panic, wanting to flee her bedroom. Asking what was wrong, she thought the building was on fire. Now what's important to mention here is, people often make claims that people are just crazy or dreaming badly or something. But this is not the case. People with hallucinations have been found to actually see, hear, smell, etc. something, when their hallucinations occur, as the same locations in the brain are stimulated as if they would get real impulses. That woman actually saw fire. She actually smelled fire. She didn't just make that up to be crazy. It's what her brain told her was happening. And she was in real panic for her life. And the same applies to when those people see someone else in their room. When they want me to guide someone out of the bedroom who isn't actually there, seemingly standing right behind me. And it makes no sense to discuss with them that no one's there. To them, someone is there. And you better do your best effort of improvising to guide that someone, even if it's no one, outside. Play along, and they'll be fine. This, to me, is the scariest thing at work. They see something you don't. Worked in a nursing home slash long-term facility for multiple years. Personally hadn't experienced anything too crazy apart from mystery call lights call bell system going off, no buttons lit up no rooms lit up, system would have to be reset from the electrical room to clear it. Hearing doors close shut, toilets flushing, faucets running. These were by no means commonplace. Other staff had some more direct experiences though, apparently in one hall a little girl would occasionally be seen walking. This had been reported by multiple staff as well as patients. A staff member was sitting out in her car during night shift when some woman who knocked on her window and quickly disappeared. The next day she was discussing this out loud with the oncoming shift when someone pulled out a picture from old files based on the description provided. Apparently, it was a match to a former patient that had passed away at least 10 years before that staff member was hired. Back when I was a paramedic in Oakland I was taking care of an elderly gentleman in the back of my ambulance he looked up into the upper corner of the ambulance and said it's okay Lulu I'll be with you soon. His daughter was with him and told me that Lulu was his wife who died 20 years earlier. A few minutes later he went into cardiac arrest and passed on. I am a psychiatrist and during my training years I worked for six months at a ward treating patients with depressive and anxiety disorders. It was an old building which had been housing psychiatric patients since the mid-1920s. On our floor we had 13 beds and a nursing station, a living room, and a few conference rooms. One day a few weeks in, I am interviewing a patient who when asked about sleeping patterns tells me that she has been hearing a baby crying at night which wakes her up. There are no babies in that hospital as the place is situated far away from housing areas and there were restricted visiting hours. Afterwards a nurse pulls me aside and tells me, that the baby crying thing is not a psychotic symptom. She is very serious about this, but won't elaborate. I kind of shrug it off, as either way it does not change the diagnostic or treatment, and forgets about the experience. Around three months in my stay I sit in the nurse's station and three nurses behind me are talking. One of them says she is very active today and the other says really? Oh, hadn't noticed. I turn around and ask them who they are talking about. They look at each other, and then one of them hesitantly says, well, there is a baby here. She cries sometimes. I of course say no, but they just kind of shrug and smiles. Not 30 seconds later I hear it, it sounded far away but not too far. A cry, clearly a baby's cry. Sounding like it is separated from us by maybe two or three walls. I am perplexed and look at the nurses. They look at me like told you so. I of course ask about this, but they can't say anything else but this faint baby cry is there and have been there always. Since then I heard it maybe two to three times a week. I told a new doctor about it who laughed, however a few weeks in her stay, she came to me, white as a sheet, and told me she heard it. All the nurses just kind of knew about it, and being in psychiatry, hearing that kind of stuff is not really something you brag about. I was transferred and haven't heard it since. I think about it sometimes, but I don't really know what to make of it. In med school we had an anatomy exam on like November 1st or 2nd. So on Halloween night, me and my roommate decided that since everyone else was off partying, 
this would be a good time to get some uninterrupted studying going. Well, it was already creepy as hell being in the basement of the med school surrounded by cadavers. Well, an hour or so in, we're going through anatomy and all of a sudden on the other side of the lab a faucet suddenly turns on. These faucets are the ones that have motion sensors on M, and we're all the way on the other side of the lab. We were a bit creeped out, but dismissed it. We get back to work and then it happens again, but on a different side of the room, again far from where we are. This happens maybe two more times over the course of an hour or so. Finally we've had enough and we decide to leave. As we're gathering our stuff and heading out, we remark to each other about a side room where the instructors will prep their lectures and for exams etc. We decide to pop our head in to see what was in there and we stopped dead in our tracks. Like I said, we were the only ones in the lab and we had heard no one else come in. In the side room there is some person that we don't really recognize bent over, working on a cadaver. Their back is to the door and me and my friend were being plenty loud, but yet they remain hunched over working on the dead body. We have no idea who this strange person is, and we've had it now. We slowly back out and get the duck out of there.